Hello and welcome everybody to the video tutorial for the pad frame design. The first thing I am going to do is extract the zip folder um, that you should find on Blackboard, so I'll double click on that. Click extract. I'm going to extract it to my desktop, so I'm just going to click extract and close out and wait for it to finish. Okay, the file has been extracted to the desktop. So if we open that, you can see that it does contain all the files that's used for our pad frame. So the next step is to start Virtuoso. With Virtuoso open, our next step is to create a new library. We're going to go to File, New, Library, and we are going to name our library Pads3. That's P-A-D-S-3. Click OK and we are going to attach it to an existing technology library. Click OK. Make sure it is on the tech library AMI 06 and click OK. And now we can close down our Virtuoso. So our library folder will be in our home directory. So if we click on our home directory we can find Pads3. That is the library that we just created. If we open that up you can see it has a CDS info and a data file and we are going to transfer all of our files into that folder so I'm just gonna hit control A and move them over and replace all and now we can close those folders down with Virtuoso back open if we go to our pads3 library you can see now that it is populated all of those files to that library and if we click on min frame and double click on the layout we can see we have our pad frame the next step is to uh, put our design within our pad frame and connect it to the pad frame so to do that we're going to click create and instance or you could just hit I and then we're going to browse and for this tutorial I'm going to be using an inverter so I'm going to go to my inverter tutorial my inverter and select layout and then I can go in and place my instance to switch between the two views in Virtuoso to actually see the the contents of the layout you can hit shift and F and it will show you the actual layout and to go back in the other view where you just see the box design you hit control and F in our design of the inverter we have the ground rail running on the bottom the power rail running on top the input on the left side and the output on the right side now because of this we are going to change our pads to match that. So the plan will be we will have the input pad here to run to the input, the ground pad to run to our ground, our VDD pad to run to VDD, and then finally our output to run to this pad. To change the pads, all we have to do is select it, hit Q, and then in the cell change the name instead of pad out this pad we're going to make pad ground so change the name and then just hit OK and we'll do that for the remaining pads okay with the pads change you can see we now have our input pad our ground pad our VDD pad and our output pad the next step will be to make the physical connections in between our pads and our actual design. The first wire that we're going to attach is our VDD rail, which is the first top pad. We're going to attach the pad to our design. And so to do that, we need to match the, the metal in the layer, uh, which for VDD will be metal 1. Uh, so we are going to attach our VDD rail of our design to the middle of the pad in between these two points here 
ends here. So we're going to select metal one and hit R and we are going to draw our metal and for the VDD and the ground rails it's important to keep the, the metal as thick as possible. So once you've completed your connection from your VDD pad to your power rail, it's a good idea to go ahead and extract your design by clicking on Verify Extract and then OK, which will create an extracted design and you can check your connectivity to make sure that nothing is shorted out. So I've opened up my extracted view by double clicking on extracted and zoomed in and if I click the pad of our VDD rail it will show me everything that it is connected to. So if I go down to our design and zoom in I can see that it is connecting correctly just to the VDD rail. It's not connected to the inputs the outputs or ground. The connections for our input and our output nodes of our design to the pad frame will actually be completed in metal 2. So in order to ensure connectivity we need to add a via between the metal 2 layer and the metal 1 layer. To do that we'll go to create instance and we'll browse to our tech library AMI 06 click on M2 to metal 1 and then place our vias in our design. With our via from metal 2 to metal 1 on our design we're now ready to connect our input pad to the input of our design. We'll be connecting in this small metal 2 layer in the middle of the pad. It's important that we don't short to the metal 2 layer above or below this particular pad because if we do we'll short out our input to ground. The completed connection between our input pad and the input to our design should look as follows. It's important to note that the the wire does not have to be as thick as VDD and ground it can be the same as the design as long as it does not violate any DRC rules. Next we'll connect the ground pad to the ground rail of our design. To do that, we'll be using Metal 1 just as we did with VDD, so we'll select Metal 1, and the connection will be in the center of the pad. And underneath this layer of Metal 2 is actually a layer of Metal 1, so anywhere you see this Metal 2, you can connect to this, to this particular pad. Now, you do not want to short out between these two layers where you see the Metal 2 and the Metal 1, otherwise you will short in between VDD and ground. The completed connection between the ground pad and the ground rail of our design is as follows. It's important to note that the thickness of the wire is as thick as possible for the design. The next connection we'll be making is with the output pad as well as the output of our design. Just as before with the input, the wire does not have to be as thick as possible and Likewise, will be connected through metal 2 in the very center of the pad, making sure not to short between these two layers of metal 2 and these two layers of metal 2. The connection between the output pad and the output pin of our design is as follows. With all the connections complete, once again, we're going to verify and extract our design so that we may check connectivity. Once the design is extracted, we open the extracted design once again by double clicking on the extracted layout and then we'll check connectivity and make sure that nothing is shorted by looking at each individual pad, our VDD, our output pad, our input pad, and our ground. Next we'll be assigning pins for each one of our pads so that we have electrical connectivity that we can use for testing. Uh, first we'll add a pad for VDD and the output. 
the first pin that we're going to place is going to be on our VDD pad. So to do that we're going to create pin and the terminal name will be VDD. The input output type needs to be jumper. Make sure that display terminal name is selected. We'll click the options and make sure that the height is 40. So to draw that we need to make sure that we have metal one selected and we will draw our pin on the pad and place the name. Next we're going to place a pin on our output pad. So to do this, like before, we're going to create pin. We're going to call it output. Make sure the display name is turned on and this is input output type output so we will hide that we are in metal one and we will draw our, our pin the next pin we're going to place is going to be our input pin so we will go to create pin we'll call it input and make sure that the input output type is of type input and we are in metal one so we will draw our pin lastly we will be adding a pin to our output pad so we will go to create pin we'll call it ground and the input output type once again like DDD must be jumper so we are in metal one and we will draw our pin So our completed design is as follows. We have our VDD pin, our output pin, our input pin, and our ground pin. So the next step is to go ahead and verify and run a DRC check on our design. So we'll go DRC, click OK, and wait for it to finish. Once the DRC check has finished, you will have several errors, almost 2,000 errors. Now all of these errors are contained within the pad frame itself. What's important to note is that there are no DRC errors in between your design or any of the wiring that connects your design to the pad frame. Once you've verified that you have no DRC violations in between your initial design and the wires connecting it to the pad frame, the next step is to extract your design one final time. So we'll go to verify and extract, hit OK, and wait for it to finish. Once the extraction is complete, go ahead and save your layout and then close the layout. The next step is we are going to be creating a symbol for our layout. So we'll go to file new, cell view, and it will be of type schematic symbol click OK and go to create cell view new cell view and from view name will be layout and the tool will be schematic symbol click OK click replace and click OK and it'll automatically create your symbol for you go ahead and close that out and we'll move on to the next step